came out here to enjoy some fresh air and walk the garden for the evening and discovered that those dang ducks, y'all, those dang ducks have ravaged all of our green tomatoes. This is what came off of what was going to be a couple dozen that I saw on the plant. This is all that was left. And so I have no choice but to harvest anything that's even close to being harvestable. Well, I was fortunate. Just got a phone call asking if they could come drop a load of chips. And Ryan and I were just talking about how this area needs to be mulched so that we can expand the garden for the fall. I think that's going to do us just right. I literally just recorded about how I had no snake gourd beans growing yet. This and this popped up overnight. I am loving seeing all the beautiful different sizes and shapes and colors of pollinators that our garden attracts. It's not just the bees that we host here. These are some adorable little wasp on our Kajari melon flower. I am hoping for some Kajari melons on this. It'll be yummy. We even have an abundance of butterflies. We don't have as many flowers planted as we would like, but we're going to work on that this fall, getting some pollinator plants planted, some perennials and such. But for now, these annuals are doing a great job of attracting some of our favorite friends. All together in one space. One, two, three. I really love garden spiders. Or what what do you call them? Do you call them writing spiders? Calligraphy spiders? They're beautiful. They're a species of orb weaver. Incredible. Great at protecting your garden. And we have one there, one there, and one there. Gardening is a funny thing. Because no matter how much you know about gardening and how to take care of your plants, you're still riddled with the struggles of the climate, whether it's been raining a lot, whether it's rained too much, whether it's not rained enough, how hot it is, how cold it is, pests coming in. There is no way to control these things. We have to work with Mother Nature as much as we can and hope for the best. That means some years you're gonna have incredible cucumber production and not so great potato production. This potato bed has been pulled and the harvest was very minimum. They were very small and very few potatoes. Does that mean I did something wrong? Maybe. Maybe this area was too shaded. Maybe it was because we were in such a severe drought and heat wave this summer. But I did everything that I've done in the past to grow great potato harvest. So I don't feel like there was much else I could do other than to do my best. And one of the great things about living in Georgia is I still have over a hundred days before the first frost. So I have put in some rows here and I'm gonna sow some green beans because green beans are the other thing I really failed at this year. So I'm hoping that the heat wave being passed, we won't have another heat wave like that. And I'll actually be able to have a very successful green bean year anyway, even though the first batch did not turn out so well. So don't give up and keep trying because each year is gonna present you with different things. You're gonna have different pests, different climates, Everything is going to change every year. So if you have a thing that you grew this year and it didn't do well, try again. You don't know. You might do great with it next year. And hopefully you will. And every time you grow something through difficult climates 
or diff difficult pest situations, you learn a lot through that process. So there's no loss. Yes, you spent some money on seeds. Yes, you spent a lot of time and energy out here working on it, but it's all an educational experience that's well worth it in the long run. Where are you going? Hmm? Thinking about what you can eat in the garden now? Huh? Now that I picked all the green tomatoes, you don't really have much to choose from. The ducks are a little bit of a pest, and we will probably have to do something about it. We're thinking about putting bird netting around the garden. We're raising all these ducks because ducks are really good about eating slugs and snails. So the majority of the time, these ducks are out on the pasture with the other animals, with the larger livestock. So what will happen is they will eat all the snugs, all the slugs and snails that are able to pass meningeal worm to our livestock. So they will actually be protecting our livestock from a very deadly parasite. It is crucial in the control of meningeal worm to have ducks. And I strongly believe that because of experience with having ducks for a while. And as soon as they were put up, we had our first two cases of meningeal worm where we lost two goats because of the horrible parasite. So now the ducks are free ranging again and since we let them free range after that experience we haven't had a case again so my experience has shown me that this is a very effective method for controlling any meningeal on our property the other thing that these ducks are good for is eggs and meat they are an excellent protein source for our family muscovy ducks have a more red meat like texture to their meat and I'm really excited to harvest some when the time comes. What we'll probably do is choose some of the bigger drakes and select them for harvest. It'll be hard, yes. I do love the ducks and I love to watch them, but I also love to see my family thrive on healthy homegrown meat that I know has been well taken care of and had a wonderful life. Remember how I said to watch out for half circles and spirals on your plants? Squash plants particularly? Well this is on a melon. So squash, cucumber, melon, watch out for these guys. You can see he is actively, or she, making a spiral on that leaf. That is a squash beetle. They look a lot like a lady beetle, don't they? But they are not the good guys. So smush them when you find them. Feed them to the ducks. And that is one of the other things the ducks are good at, is eating bugs like this in the garden. Okay. I feel like I just spent three hours trimming up these Cherokee purple. Had to take a lot of leaves off. That I removed anything that was brown or starting to spot with blight to help prevent the spread. So hopefully we'll get one more fruiting before the blight completely takes over. Maybe more. Depends on if I can keep the ducks from jumping up and plucking off the green tomatoes. I'm hoping that they're high enough up on the plant now that they won't be able to reach and that there'll be a lull in between now and when the fruit are ripe that the ducks will be trained out of the garden. I think having 10 days of free range in the garden without anybody telling them no was 
kind of a bad idea, but hopefully if I continue coming out here and telling them no when I see them and uh, the fruit being higher and possibly putting bird netting around these beds, this might have to happen. I would love to say I don't need to have the ducks free ranging, but that is their purpose, is to free range so that they can take care of the slugs and snails. So I can't really lock them up in a coop because then why do I have them if they're not out doing their job where the livestock are? And that's where they are usually. They come in here a couple of times a day and look for bugs. And I watch them do that and usually they're just going after bugs. But before vacation, they were not doing the fruits like they are now. So I really feel like it was um, something that they learned a bad habit of and I'm gonna hopefully try to train them out of it. We'll see. So I was about to pull these plants out because they're romas, which are determinate, but there's new blooms that look like they got pollinated on a couple of these plants. New blooms that haven't even opened. So I think I'm gonna trim them up. We truly are so blessed. We were able to get another load of wood chips. That's two new fresh loads. And Ryan and I had just been talking about how we wanted to take this area from the edge of the garden out into the yard and make all of this garden beds too. So this is perfect. I am so excited. I can't wait. This fall, we're going to have amazing gardens. Fall and winter is really great for growing in Georgia. All the root crops, all the leaf crops, and all the brassicas do amazing through our winters. Definitely got kept honey in there. That's all kept honey. Yeah. Hive beetle. We got a hive beetle problem. Looking closely at the bodies, I don't see any sign of varroa mites. So that's good. And there were so many crawling away too. Oh, one just flew away. I didn't know they flew. I'm being pretty... Smash them if I can. That's a lot. Never seen that kind of problem in our hives before, so that's concerning. This is a very built out hive though. I'm seeing yeah. capped honey on this frame. This side, not so much. That's where the hive trap was. I wonder if that has something to do. The hive beetle trap. Wow, look at all that honey. Oh wow, this is excellent. They are bringing in tons of nectar. This is about to be capped. Some of them have already started to cap. This is a lot of honey. We won't be harvesting honey this year. We're gonna wait, do it in the spring. Let these guys get well established. Just go slow so they have a chance to move, but if they don't move, that's not your fault. Let's see. All right, get ready, I'm gonna shake. All right. Shake it off, shake it off. There we go. I think I'm just gonna leave this one be. Haha. <laughs> 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 yeah, that looks it looks good, it's just not building out as much. But it was the crappier frames. The old yucky frames, so that could be a huge part of it. I bet if we replace those outer frames with the beeswax covered ones, they would probably be building more. 
so we might want to consider doing that. Cool. Cool. I'm gonna get some B-roll. I'm gonna undress myself in the yard. <laughs> Do you need any of these tools? No. 